Thank you Cisco for powering up my workspace. What's going on YouTube? Welcome to my room tour, a space that has taken me over three years to make and has been slowly becoming my workspace and office. I'm slowly starting to outgrow the space to the point that I keep tech in the garage, have boxes next to my desk, and even had all of the mess in my closet. So if you think the channel deserves to move into a dedicated condo, subscribe and like for the algorithm. Walking into the room, to the left you will find my main setup. This workspace right here is where I get most of my content creation done when I'm not moving around the house with a razor blade. Powered by an Intel 10980XE with 64GB of RAM and an RTX 3080, I decided to use the Antic Crystal P120 along the NZXT Z73 to cool the CPU and its components. And just recently, I added 500GB of M.2 memory to my Strix motherboard which is responsible for controlling my LED cooling fans, but because 500 gigabytes is not enough, I've got a 1TB SSD drive from XPG connected to a 700 watt Antic Zen power supply. To its left, we've got an ultra wide monitor made by Dell with the model number U3417W. This has an IPS panel that allows me to split tasks very well and delivers that immersive gaming experience. It's already 4 years old, which means I'm lacking that USB-C port but has plenty of other ports to compensate. It does have a 3440x1440p resolution at 60Hz with a 21x9 aspect ratio, 300 nits of brightness and an anti-glare coating. Not the best for creative work but great for productivity. With its FESA mount feature, I have this like floating vibe, but sadly, this monitor mount is not sold anymore. And because the speakers are terrible on this monitor, I worked with Audio Engine a couple of years ago to showcase their A5 Plus bookshelf type speakers. I do have them connected over Bluetooth to diminish my cable use, and yes, they do still stream 24 bit audio. It has a 5 inch Kevlar woofer, a great knob for volume and low power mode, plus a whole set of inputs to make your life easier. They are by far my favorite set of speakers. When I'm not using these, I have my Logitech G733s on, which are lightweight and wireless up to 20 meters from its adapter. In terms of sound, they do deliver an immersive 3D audio experience thanks to BTS Headphone X. They weigh 278 grams, provides around 30 hours of battery, and have a great detachable mic that I never truly use. Because my mic of choice is a Shure SM7B. I picked up this mic because it is great for vocals and it's pretty much what every podcaster has, which is the main reason as to why I got it because it does sound good. It came with a switch cover plate to cover the frequency modes, as well as a large black foam windscreen to save that awesome cardio polar pattern. I did have to buy a couple of XLR cables mainly because if you get this, you'll need to pair it up with a cloud lifter. This will provide that extra 25 decibels of clean and transparent gain because this is a low output passive microphone and that's where our Scarlett 2i2 third gen audio interface comes in. In short, the audio interface converts these XLR signals into format PCs understand, but to make this whole bundle work, I maximize my channel audio, use the phantom power and tweak my sound within my PC to convert that stereo output to mono. And this whole setup is supported by a blue compass boom arm that I still use as a headphone hanger till this day. Next to it, my custom keyboard of choice made by SM Keyboards complements my whole setup theme. This is a 65% keyboard with yellow Gatoron switches and GM key keycaps. It does have a USB-C input and awesome small little details that truly make this keyboard mine. There's an awkward height to it and this is why I have a wooden palm rest from Keychron. Although, this isn't the only palm rest I have. Along with the Razer Viper, I use a Delta Hub wrist rest because of the mouse's low profile. With the help of his charging dock, I have that hyperspeed wireless technology that makes this 20,000 dpi sensor elite. 
Its tracking speed is rated at 650 inches per second, which is extremely good at tracking on the right type of mouse pad. It is super light at 74 grams, has been delivering a total of 40 hours of battery life for me, and does have 8 programmable buttons. But I mainly use Synapse to color match my dock and adjust the DPI settings as well. Definitely one of my favorite mouses up to now, but battery life does degrade over the years. The Viper does sit within a medium sized groove made merino wool felt pad. Definitely not for gaming, but if you happen to work a lot more, this might interest you. It covers a good amount of my desk, meaning I get to avoid scratches because I keep my cameras around, my groove made brass knife, and other filming equipment and desk accessories I use throughout the day. I sincerely love how thin this is, the sponginess feel when sliding a mouse, and how it absorbs light very well for better aesthetics. But I do have to say, the desk pad isn't abrasive at all, because it does slide extremely easily. I do have a wireless fast charger made by Moshi that matches this pad, which now connects to my 12 South Stego USB-C hub. This hub does have an aluminum exterior shell that dissipates heat well. It uses my motherboard port as the external power, and it's comprised of an extra USB-C connection a 4K HDMI port, 3 USB-A 3.0 ports where you will also find a single port delivering fast charge to my charger, an Ethernet port, and a set of SD card readers. I heavily rely on this to import and export all my footage from my Sony cameras in order to make these videos. Not only that, but this does power my Logitech Bryo 4K webcam. It has inbuilt dual stereo microphones that I never use, delivers 720p, 1080p and 4K video modes at 30 frames per second. In front of it, I'm usually sitting on my Razer Isker gaming chair. I did make a full review on this so if you want more details, feel free to watch it. But overall, after 3 months of use, it's a great gaming chair although I do wish the seat had more padding. The stitching is phenomenal and the carbon fiber looks like a Lamborghini, which keeps me pretty happy because it does match my money tree plant I keep on this desk. This little guy here only needs water once a week and my gantry desk bomb light doesn't seem to bother him at all. All of this sits on a 250cm by 65cm Salgen tabletop from IKEA. I wasn't too sure about how well this was going to reflect natural light, but it turned out well and looks super good. It is extremely heavy so if you are considering getting one, ask for help. I did drill this to my autonomous smart desk too, I do not worry because this steel frame is able to lift up to 265 pounds. On top of that, it has a total height range of 29.4 to 49.6 inches which I paired up with the floor mat when standing, and it does extend horizontally enough to be able to accommodate a 250 centimeter table. Although I do have some Alex drawers at the bottom in order to avoid bending the wood so much over time. On top of all of this, I kept a spot for my networking setup. Lily have been looking for a reliable building block for my office network and Cisco has finally been able to deliver that for me. My CBS350 switch allows for all my computers to connect to each other over the network. This all happens reliably and securely since you are limiting your internet traffic to desired devices, unlike a hub which just sends data to everyone in the network until the right person gets it, which is a hacker's wonderland. With this unit, I can connect up to 8 different devices to each other, whether it's a computer, a printer, a wireless access point, or a server. It allows these 8 devices to share information and talk among them. I also get those sweet 10 gigabit ethernet speeds and flexibility if you want to stack up more switches. And if you are interested in Cisco's wireless products, these do deliver Wi-Fi 6, which achieves speeds up to 4 times faster than previous Wi-Fi standards, improving the user experience and performance of bandwidth hungry apps like voice, video, and collaboration. As a non-network engineer, this was super easy to deploy. With their intuitive dashboard, you can automate deployment, monitor devices, and manage the life cycle of all your switches. So if you are looking to power up your workspace with Cisco, check the link down below. Towards the other side of the room, you will find my incomplete second desk setup. This is where I've been filming most of the reviews when it comes to laptops, tablets, desktops, and so on. I do have some products that will be staying within this desk, but overall, I want to bring in an M1 Mac Mini, keep my BenQ 4K monitor, a new tabletop, and add a few things for better aesthetics and productivity. But honestly, this is where I script all my videos no matter which device I'm using. I also happen to develop our new Canvas Store website coming soon and have meetings with clients within this 
desk. When the iMac M1 is in here, I mainly rock a different peripheral setup. My mouse of choice here is the MX Master 3 which sits on a black roof made leather desk pad. The MX Master weighs a total of 141 grams which is why I personally rather have it on a leather surface. It is the ultimate productivity mouse with great programmable buttons, a 4000 dpi sensor and a battery capacity that lasts for months. It does come with a USB receiver in case you don't have Bluetooth or want a more reliable connection. But in my opinion, the ultimate feature is the buttons. With 7 programmable buttons that allow you to do almost everything, within you'll find an auto shift scroll wheel for a more preferred scroll and a thumb wheel that is not so far away from its gesture button. Altogether, it truly makes this device the ultimate productivity mouse. Towards its left, sitting on a dark wool felt desk pad, I usually rock my Ant Pro 2. I enjoyed this keyboard so much that I made a review on it, but in short, this is a 60% Bluetooth keyboard with Gatoron Brown switches, double shot PBT keycaps, and is RGB backlit. I did start using its wired mode instead and not because of its Bluetooth connectivity, but because a single charge lasts around 7 hours for me. I did get used to having a palm rest on my other setup, therefore I've paired my Ant Pro with a leather and wood palm rest from Groovemade. I do wish the leather was softer and if you come from a mechanical keyboard, in my opinion this doesn't pair so well with the Magic Keyboard. I would definitely check their wooden keyboard tray as well. Towards the end of the mat, I have my walnut headphone stand that matches the vibe. It is heavy at 2.5 pounds but suits most headphones you put on there. And if you haven't realized it by now, I'm going for that walnut look. This is why I have my HD6 audio engine Bluetooth speakers in here. These did come with removable magnetic reels, but in my opinion, they look so much better without them. The HD6 includes some significant upgrades over the A5 Pluses, they have a better bass response, a larger custom tweeter that delivers an extraordinary soundstage, and a thicker cabinet. Definitely a favorite for me. On top of that, I just love the warm feel my gantry light produces when it hits the wood, but the tabletop just doesn't do it for me. The autonomous smart desk two legs will be staying because the black frame is so much better looking than the white one. I also decided to keep my autonomous ergo chair and have it within this setup. It has been my favorite budget chair up to now and I heavily recommend you check my review on it. But honestly, I love the tilt the mesh backrest, and lately I've been loving how wide the seat is. I think it's because my Razer Isker is pretty much like a bucket seat. Although I am still debating on whether or not I should keep this autonomous filing cabinet in here. Don't get me wrong, it has been great for storage and it does have a sweet filing drawer. It came with some keys in case I wanted to lock the top drawer and I genuinely enjoy the attention to detail within the handles. I did have to remove its wheels because of the height but I'm just not enjoying having this so close to my seat. Now, because this desk does measure a total of 135 centimeters, it allows me to fit my couch on its right. This here is a sofa bed originally replacing my real bed. I know, but ever since I decided I was going to do this full time, I decided to convert my bedroom into an office as well. I'm a big fan of my sofa's grey fabric color and I like the pillows it came with. Although as soon as you guys smash the subscriber button to 100k, I will get dedicated YouTube pillows. With a total width of 170 centimeters and a height of 90 centimeters, this has been a sweet spot to sleep, read, and work. Opening this up and setting it up takes 2 seconds and it comes with a very thin futon, apparently made in Canada. It does take a lot of room in terms of depth at around 185cm open and 88cm closed, but it has been a go-to for reading and productivity. Paired with my gantry task light and a floor lamp, I have a comfortable spot for reading when I can and doing work with my razor blade. This laptop has been my ultimate device of choice, mainly because I can use its i7 and the RTX 2070 to easily create content with it. Not only that, but thanks to WSL2, it allows me to easily work on my web development projects just like if I were on a Mac. Adobe products and CAD software are extremely heavy and from experience, Windows handles it best when on the go, but I do enjoy going back to macOS when doing light work coding and editing assets for projects. What can I say, I'm a bit of a mess. On the other hand, my wall shelves aren't. These walnut shelves here are made by Groovemade and I got their 38 inch plus 54 inch bundle. It keeps my books organized, my Legos on display, and a few cool tech boxes I showcase. I also use it for lenses and cameras when I'm not using them at all. But I'm at the point where I don't know where to store all my tripods, my softbox lighting source, and all of the filming equipment I own. I usually move these all the way around 
around in the room depending on where I am filming and what I am filming. Besides that, I often keep both of my Sony Alpha cameras on my wolf felt mat when they are not on the shelves. I truly only have a kit lens and a size 24-70mm lens for production. And if you are wondering what I use for most of my b-roll shots, well, I do have a motorized camera slider from newer. But to be honest, I rarely use my newer lighting softbox paired with my Godox SL60W as my main lighting source because I tend to shoot during the day. Although when it gets dark, I have my Philips Hue bulbs ready to go. I did pair all of my lighting sources with different types of Hue bulbs and to top it all off, I am rocking a lighting switch, some play bars, and a lighting strip to give it that desired vibe. Don't get me wrong, I use these all the time during the day since I am a bit of an orange freak, but at night, it does an incredible job at lighting my room. When I keep things simple, I use the smart switch to turn my lights or on off, dim them, or even change the mood, but if I need some specific features, I use the Hue app which is all paired up with the Hue bridge. I also used my old Lifex strip inside my closet to keep things bright in there. A few months ago, I thought it was best to revamp my closet simply to make things look good and make room for boxes. But as you might have seen, I have boxes literally everywhere, including in the garage. However, anything related to keys, wallet and small stuff that I use on the go, I typically store this within my walnut catch-all shelf. I have a small little hanger beside it as well to prevent from hanging stuff on the chairs and if you look closely at my 12 by 10 feet room, you'll notice I have acoustic foam everywhere to truly make this a full complete office space. I hope you've enjoyed this room tour. I'm going to get my Mac Mini at the Apple Store to deliver a full review next week dedicated to programmers. Although I haven't talked much about my Canvas company, it is currently something we are rebranding and I also need to code the store for it. Stay tuned with my socials, take care, and I'll see you soon.